Hey guys, I hope you're all well and keen to get sketching for today. And today's lesson, like usual, is only going to take 10 or 15 minutes and all you need is the blank paper and the pen of ballpointness. So last week we introduced sketching freehand circles and ellipses, so drawing round things. So far we've only been working with 2D shapes, so flat drawings. And today we're going to jump ahead a little bit and look at our first 3D sketches and we'll be drawing cubes and cuboids. So before we get into that, we're going to start with our warm up and today we are doing an entire page of squares. So let's get started. Keep them nice and big. And remember, free, get your hand moving nice and freely, smoothly, draw lightly, nice construction lines. Um, you can draw squares and rectangles. Let's go like that rather, because none of what I've drawn so far is actually square. That's a bit awkward. Getting better. See, this warm up exercise actually does warm you up and get you into the zone of drawing smoothly and squarely. Rectangular. And when you can't see your squares anymore because there's too many squares, let's try and make one nice and dark. So it pops out on the page. Square over here. Square. Let's do a little square. Alrighty. Warm up done. So, what do we do from here? Well, when we draw cubes, a cube is basically squares in three dimensions, right? And we now have got instead of this 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 2d object which represents itself properly on a flat page right because we're going into 3d objects 3d objects on a flat page how do we do that and this is where we start to bring in things like perspective and we actually basically just tricking the eyes into thinking that something is three-dimensional on the page when really it's flat. So there's a couple of tricks and things that we're gonna do with that and we'll be unpacking those as we go along. Um, but to start with, we generally draw a cube by dropping down the first center line and then drawing out in what is actually called an isometric uh, pattern. Everything is at, I think it's 30 degrees, um, 30 and 60 degrees. And so we're gonna start by drawing that line over there that line over there and keep it keep it light keep it constructions and then we're going to drop down so essentially we've, we've drawn like a sideways uh, diamond right triangle diamond so we've drawn a sideways diamond but now to extend this cube to get it into its cube shape we want to pull out another line over there and you can start to see I think, where we're going so what we would what we would to look at if we looked at the side of this is that this would be 90 degrees this would be 90 degrees this would be 90 degrees and this would be 90 degrees because we'd be looking at the side of a square but now we're not looking at that square head on so we've got to represent what that would look like from the angle that we're seeing it at even though it's still being drawn on a flat piece of paper and then in order to get a cube we need to get it equal and I've started drawing this actually at, in the wrong in a bad place on the page because it's too big it's going to go off the page over there but now we've got the left side and the right side I'm glad I got that right because my left and my right are always difficult for me and then we want to bring this one across that way and this one across that way to complete that cube and this is terrible I've committed crimes against um, sketch practice because I drew my cube off the page but um, um, my excuse is that uh, I'm drawing this through a camera and I'm not looking at my page myself now, because this is completely square, when we draw the, the lines that are sitting behind our cube, remember we 
what we do um, in in sketching, constructing things not, uh, sort of properly from a design perspective, is we want to be able to show the hidden detail, what's sitting behind the front sections, because it's essentially this is the one plane that we'd see, this is the other plane that we'd see, and this is the top. So left view, right view, top view, but what's behind it? And the only thing that's missing is the line that we can't see because that point is sitting up somewhere over there that, that's off my page. Right, so there we've got our first cube that we've drawn and now let me, let me try and do one that I've explained that, that principle and let try and get it to fit on the page properly. So remember dropping down a center line and that's the first kind of the closest point that we're looking at. I'm going to start much further down this time because I don't want it to go off the edge of the page and I'm going to try and get that out to go at about 30 degrees. Now the next one that I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a, a line um, and then this line and this line are going to be parallel. Later on when we start drawing on what we call perspective these lines will start to point together. Um, so, and, and the, the faster they angle together, the more extreme the perspective is. But for now, we're just going to draw a, a cube in um, sort of, yeah, without, without any perspective at all. So there we've got our first plane. We're going to bring out the next side of our cube and the next plane over there. And again, if you need to draw a couple of times to get it right, that's okay. Then we're going to pull down now this line and this line should be parallel as well because we don't have any perspective here which means that the line over here is also going to need to be in perspective so I'm going to drop it down over there and again we push it past now this is actually quite a, a stretched out cuboid object because this is more of a rectangle this this length from here to here is not the same as this length from here to here and then we're going to take this point, bring it out, and again it's going to go parallel to this line, to that center line, and then again from this point to that point. And we want to draw our hidden detail, so this line needs to run parallel to this line, going out, meeting there, and then technically if we get our, our, our lines right, it should meet up at that point there and swing through. Now we've got the shape of our cuboid object. We want to get this to actually kind of to be able to see what which side is facing us, which side is hidden, which side's behind. So what we can do is we can start using our line weights now to to bring that out and, and to make it more clear. So we can drop a nice thick line down there, a nice thick line down there. So that's a solid line and a solid line over there. So these are the edges that we're seeing and we can see that I mean this line is a little bit darker than these two because I went over it twice. But now we've got the lines that are actually sort of on the, on the outer edge. So these ones over here and if we really want to make this start looking more three-dimensional there's something really cool that we can do and that's putting what we call a shadow line down. And so there if we if we just have a normal solid line going along and we've got that we can see our cube is really now started to pop out on the page we can see that cube clearly but if we go over these lines one more time and we can start to pull those out and make them a little bit darker even then what we find is it creates kind of a, an, an, an illusion of the background sitting, sitting, you know, that, 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 like there's space behind that object. So that the, the border lines going around the object are a little bit thicker than the solid lines showing the edges on the object itself. And there we've got quite a cool cube coming through on our a, um, page. So what you guys can do now is practice a couple of couple of uh, different cubes drawing the way we've constructed it so again we'll start with that center line and if you extend the center line up you've already kind of started drawing that back line um, of, of your hidden detail and then we're going to go vertical lines these uh, 30 degree and 60 degree lines and then we start to finish the construction okay so that's pretty cool right 
I'm going to quickly draw one more cube and introduce an, a bonus shape that we can bring out with making cubes um, and we're going to use that to quickly draw a cylinder. So I'm going to drop this, this cube down really quickly, um, as quick as I can, so it probably won't be super accurate. Um, won't get the, and I'm going to make it cuboid, so it's not, it's not, it's more like a, a, a cube of rectangles rather than a cube that is completely square. Right, so we've got our, our cube there. Now last week we looked at drawing ellipses and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a cylinder by using that same principle that we used last week and dropping down now we've got our square and our, we can start putting in the curves over there, over there, pushing it out around, getting it nice and circular. So now instead of using, doing a perfect circle on a, on a perfect square, we've drawn a perfect circle in three dimensions because we've got that square in three dimensions. So now if we get that what we can do is we can push out that edge over there all the way down to there and ooh, that was squiff. connect those edges and now we've used a cube to construct a cylinder and then we can drop down our solid lines to show the object that we are wanting to show and then the rest sort of fall away and become construction lines pretty cool hey so now we went straight from a cube we dropped in some of the other principles that we were learning and there we have very messy but pretty cool looking cylinder I hope you guys had fun I'm looking forward to having um, next week's lesson as we expand on our three-dimensional shapes have fun cheers guys